We have just discussed how the trace can help us determine one eigenvalue. That's because eigenvalues add up to the trace, so if we know all but one of the eigenvalues, the trace can help us determine the remaining eigenvalue. Well then, the determinant of the matrix should be helpful in the same way, because the product of the eigenvalues equals the determinant. So once again, if we know all but one of the eigenvalues, the determinant should help us determine the remaining one. Well, it's not quite that simple, mostly because the determinant is much harder to compute than the trace. The trace is just the sum of the diagonal entries, and the determinant requires quite a bit of work, especially for larger matrices. Also, if one of the eigenvalues that we may have already determined equals zero, then the whole determinant equals zero no matter what, and then it's not very helpful. Well, here I came up with one matrix where the determinant is quite helpful, and not by itself, but in combination with a trace. So the trace and the determinant combined can help us in situations where we know all but two of the eigenvalues. And this is one of those situations. It's very interesting. At first sight, it may look like a diagonal matrix, but it's not because the main diagonal runs this way. So the eigenvalues of this matrix are not one, four, and nine. Well, four is one of the eigenvalues. Let's write it down. And the, re and the corresponding eigenvector is 0, 1, 0. So that's the one we know from one of the other features we discussed. Now let's determine the other two. First of all, we'll get their sum from the trace and their product from the determinant. And so the trace of this matrix is 4. This eigenvalue is 4. So the sum of the remaining two is 0. So they're opposites of each other. What's their product? Well, the determinant of this matrix is minus the product of these three elements, if you remember how to compute the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So it's minus 36, and one of them is 4, so the product of the remaining two are minus 9. So we're looking for two matrices, excuse me, for two numbers that are opposite of each other, and their product is minus 9. So of course, that's 3 and negative 3. So we have just determined the two remaining eigenvalues, and of course the eigenvectors will require a little bit of work, but not so much work. Let's first deal with 3. Subtracting 3 from the diagonal, let's just do it right here. 1, negative 3, negative 3, 1, 9. And of course the eigenvector corresponding to this one is 1, 3 and zero in the middle. We don't need this column at all. In fact, we cannot use it. So one, zero, three. Let's now deal with minus three. Now we have to subtract minus three, so that's adding three, so this becomes a seven. Not that it matters. And of course, we need to take minus three of the final column to come up with a proper vector in the null space of this matrix. So one, zero, negative three. So there you go. The determinant is helpful sometimes. Not often, but this is one good example where it is. And in combination with the other features that we've learned, we can now identify the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of more special matrices. So the determinant, take away, is useful sometimes. Practically useful sometimes. Conceptually useful very often.